called. Okay, right. So all of you just sit back comfortably, okay? And close your eyes softly and take a slow, deep, long breath and breathe into the center of your body wherever you feel the center is. Slowly breathe again and relax your head, relax your shoulders, your jaw, your chest, hands, your stomach, abdomen, thighs, foot. Just relax. Drop all the energy that you might have been carrying from the day. Release everything that doesn't belong to you as you exhale. So inhale. And exhale and release what's not yours. And feel the lightness in your body when you release what's not yours and when you embrace what's yours. So observe this lightness. Observe the surface on which you are sitting and feel grounded in this moment. And open your heart to receive. Drop all judgments and expectations, right and wrong, good and bad. And simply open your heart to receive any guidance that is here for you by your ancestors, by all the divine forces guiding you all the time. So simply be open to receive whatever you might need right now beyond any judgment of your own. Trust the higher forces of life and be open to receive from life itself. And as you as you just do that and as you open to receive feel the support of your family system behind your back your parents your ancestors they're all supporting you from back from behind as you open yourself to receive all the abundance and all the love from nature and once just breathe into this abundance. Breathe into this abundant state. And slowly, when you feel open and relaxed, you can open your eyes and come back to the here and now. Maybe take a sip of water if you have water. Okay. And in one word, can you just type how do you feel? Hi, Reshu. We've just started. Yeah. Contented. Okay. Okay, grounded extremely right. Okay. You can refer back to the recording ratio for the if you want to see the meditation. Okay, relaxed. Great. Thank you, all of you. Thank you. So this is what it tastes like when we are ready to embrace our own energy. When we are ready to embrace our own selves. We just did it for five minutes, right? All of you. So don't worry so much about linear time as to five minutes or five hours or five years. Try to look at the possibility that this feeling can bring, this state can bring. Okay? Okay. 
So I'm going to share my screen. Okay, you all can see my screen, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, right. So, depression or anxiety is nothing but our soul's way of awakening to our own authentic energy it's nature's call for alignment to our truest versions. It's a gift only if we are willing to tap into the wisdom it brings along with all the complex emotions and difficult experiences. So this is what I have learned personally from the experience that I have been through as well as hundreds of clients that I've worked with. Okay. And I could see this every time, right? It's actually a call. And if we are ready to look at it beyond the judgment of right and wrong, and if we are ready to slowly understand the deeper meaning behind it, we get to know that it's actually a blessing in disguise. It's, it's a way where we experience heightened emotions only to realize what belongs to us and what doesn't belong to us, okay? Even though the experience is difficult, unfamiliar, it brings complex emotions and we don't know how to handle complex emotions, right? We did not learn that. So it's difficult, that's okay. But if we bring our focus to what it brings along with it and how to go deeper, it can be realized as a gift in life. So that's the possibility, okay? So I'm going to discuss a case, okay? This let's say I'm calling her Tina, and I'm you know just hiding her name, real name for confidentiality purposes. So there were so many emotions, uh, you know, uh, that I was struggling with when I decided to do this masterclass. There were so many emotions that came to me that I want to talk about to everybody, and there are many uh, subsets of emotions right so for example i can be sad and at the same time i can be helpless at the same time i can be restless powerless i can also feel uh, grief i can feel depressed i can feel angry at the same time and i can also feel uh, disgust i can also feel uh, guilty so there are many emotions that we only if we are human beings, okay? There is no other parameter required. No matter where you come from, what you work with, what are the kind of people that you, you know, uh, gel along with or don't gel along with, it doesn't matter. What matters is here that you are a human and any human being has to deal, you know, has to navigate through these emotions one or the other time, right? And uh, no matter how much we try to avoid its presence and how much we try to neglect and ignore its presence, it keeps coming back, keeps coming back, right? So the idea is to understand what are emotions. If we are human beings, we have to understand emotions. Otherwise, we we'll live a very limited life. So all of you who are here, I'm assuming that you don't want to live a limited life and you want to live a life that is expansive where you can bring your own self without having to deal through so much, right? That's what brings you here in this space, for example. So the idea is to understand our emotions from a non-judgmental lens because as human beings, we are here, we are going to experience emotions that are good and bad and we have to find a way to come to terms with it and only then we can go deeper, okay? So the first level is to come to terms with we are emotional beings. We are not non-emotional beings. If we keep on trying to avoid emotions, how will we ever learn what is, what, what, why is it happening in the first place? What is it trying to tell us, right? So look at all of your experiences without judgment and... Uh, We'll go through uh, the process and I know easier said than done and all of that. The thing is, 
out of all the complex emotions, I decided to mainly talk about two, okay, mainly, which is pain and anger, okay, pain and anger. Today in this class, I'm going to focus more on pain and anger and the case that I'm going to talk about, Tina's case, okay, also will tell us about how pain and anger can uh, embody in our lives okay and we'll go to the deeper layers of it so stay with me I'm going to read a letter so let me come to Tina now okay so Tina is a young woman in her early 30s okay and she got married uh, three years ago and she started working with me one year ago and she has been working consistently since one year and when she came to me, she was really uh, flushed out, you know, all her energy, it was drained. She was in a lot of emotional pain. It was not like a cut or a physical injury that she was dealing with. She was dealing with a lot of emotional uh, pain in her body. And all she wanted to do is she wanted to get rid of her family. She wanted to get rid, even though she loved this man dearly and she loved this person from the core of her heart. Just after marriage, she had some experiences after which she wanted to just get rid of the system somehow. And uh, she was in this, uh, you know, in this uh, confusion, in this conflict as to how do I decide? How do I decide whether I should stay whether I should go, whether I should do something about it. And she was stuck. So she came to me and she was like, I'm stuck. And I'm stuck badly. And she could not sleep for days and days. Okay. And she was not able to understand anything. She did not tell me that she's going through any pain as such. <coughs> <coughs> Give me one second. So sorry, guys. Okay. So she was not knowing of her own emotions, but she was knowing of all the surroundings that was making her feel depressed, be it her husband, be it her in-laws, be it her job experience, everything was making her feel more and more depressed. So she felt stuck in life and she wanted to get out of it. So she came and we worked for a couple of sessions, only two sessions, after which she started working on her own self. Okay. So she told me that, uh, you know, I cannot write. I don't know how to journal. I don't know how to, um, you know, uh, make sense of my emotions. I don't know how to read. I would suggest her certain readings. And she was like, I really don't like reading. I don't I don't, uh, you know, I've never finished a book, so I don't think I can read. So after working for two sessions, and it was very intense work, actually. So she realized certain parts of her emotions that allowed her to journal for the first time. So after two sessions, roughly after two months of starting her work, she one day, because of some disruption in the house, she felt very connected to her emotions and she wrote something for the first time so I'm going to read that out okay she wrote that and uh, for the first time she could realize her own emotions so sometimes all of you this is again a point to note sometimes we are unable to reflect without someone's guidance it happened with me as well I knew I was curious like all of you you know when I started on this journey I was as curious as all of you, but then I did not know how to, uh, you know, water this seed of curiosity, how to find the path where this curiosity will make more sense. 
and it will give me what I need. So that's something that we are all actually looking for, right? We all know somewhere what we want, somewhere in a very, uh, you know, fade sort of a way, even if not clear. Somewhere we feel, even if nothing we know, we want to feel good. We want to feel good. That's something we all know. Even if you don't know how will you feel good, you know you want to feel good, right? So acknowledging that fact in itself is very strong. That I know this, that I want to feel good. Even if I don't know, how will I get that, okay? So that's what brought Tina to the space of knowing herself better. And after working for two sessions, she could actually find that moment because she released some parts of her and uh, sorry, she released some parts that didn't belong to her. And she actually got something which allowed her to be connected to her emotions. Okay, we'll come to the analysis later. So I'm coming to the letter. Okay, so she wrote this and she shared with me and I'm going to read it. And then we learn how to reflect. Okay, all of us. So please hear the letter as I say. And when you hear the words, see how you feel in the body. What are the words that make you feel triggered? What are the words that relates to you? Just observe, okay? So she wrote this. I'm going to read it. I feel sick, okay? Sick of my husband, sick of my in-laws. I don't understand their language of love. I truly don't. If this is a clue, what the fuck is this clue telling me? Pardon my language, but this is her way of expressing her emotions. So I'm going to read it as is. Okay, guys. So have space as you read, like just hold space as you listen to this. What is the pain telling me? It comes again and again and again. And all I'm left with is acute helplessness and sadness why is all of this happening? I just did a load of dishes after practice class and I was still feeling guilty of not doing the cleaning today. So this was a time when pandemic, you know, was at its full peak and uh, when we were working actually. So, you know, this is her experience. Mummy told me to do, but I didn't do it even after that. Am I the only one responsible for the cleaning? What if I don't want to clean? Am I and my husband not equal partners in life? He kept sitting there and listened to her. It has happened so many times. He won't utter a single word, will never take responsibility of anything. He will keep shut like a dumb fuck. Why do I have to do more work than him? and still feel guilty. Why is my life like this? Is this because he's a man and I am a woman? Is this how it is going to be? Can nothing be done or what? He will sit like a boss and I and mom are almost like his servants. Usko, you all understand Hindi? Right, Aparna, Daksha, can you just raise hands yes. yeah yes okay so i'm reading as is okay i'm reading the hindi part usko uh, usko phal chheel ke de do us, uh, usko bartan saaf nahi karna aata usko jhadu nahi lagana aata wo kaise karega ye sab khana bhi nahi le sakta khali chup chap baith sakta hai aur usko wo haq bhi hai it's all for granted and it takes the soul out of me not the part where she tells me all this what takes a toll on me is his attitude. He goes blind. He can't do a single thing and I feel like thrashing him to the core. He can't step up and take any discomfort. It's all new for me, right? I am also learning, right? Is it wrong to have an ask from your husband? If yes, then why do we call each other lovers? Why do we say that we want to keep each other happy? that we can do anything for each other. If everything is like this, if nothing changes, what is the need of having any expectation at all? I am sick of this system, which is now mine, and I need to take it as is. But I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. 
I hate him for lying to me. He doesn't love me. He can never take care of me. He can never see the beauty inside of me. Kya life hai ye? He can just find logic and give me gyan, but can do nothing to make me feel good. Isn't it better to be with someone who contributes equally to the work we need to do in physical reality? Kya ye abuse nahi hai? I can feel my mother and my mother-in-law in my body. I can feel them to the core and it is because of their silent suffering that I can't take it anymore. Being an adult is very difficult. I move through a tedious process of emotional navigation, but I'm sick of being the only one to step up in this relationship. Why don't, why does, why won't, sorry, why won't he step up to the, to share the discomfort? And on top of it, he will give me a uh, gyan, like uh, everyone has a choice, etc. And then why can't you make a choice for me? Even if I avoid work for now, I feel I will have to do it in future. And I hate this feeling. Ye feeling future tak kaise chala jata hai, no idea. I want to get rid of this system. I want to live life on my own terms. I feel so sick. I really need help. Please help me, please save me, or I will go nuts from this pain. Okay. So just tell me in one word in chat box, how do you feel right now as I have completed the letter? One or two words. Okay, opening up, can relate. Okay, you wish to help her and you can relate to her, but how do you feel? Tell me your feeling, okay? I feel pain in my stomach, okay, Sonar. Opening up is okay, Aparna. Empathetic is also okay, empathy is okay. I feel sad pain in my chest, okay. So right away, lean back, all of you, okay? And tell yourself, this story belongs to Tina. This is not my story. Even though her story is bringing insights in my life, it is still not my story. Just that. And let yourself feel whatever comes up. I don't feel anything, okay. But then you can relate, okay. I feel a headache with all the anger, okay. Okay. It's absolutely okay, Reshu. All of you. Become aware of this pain and anger, okay, for one second become aware of this pain and anger simply as something that we as human beings are going to experience no matter what. And we have to learn what is it trying to tell us, okay? We have to learn, right? All of you, all of us together, actually. We need to understand what is happening. Right, okay, Daksha, thank you, right? So, what I'll do is, we'll come back to the letter again, okay? We'll come back to the letter again. And yeah, like I told you, we'll talk about pain and anger. Right. So now we are going to reflect, okay, all of you. And we'll see how to reflect. But before that, we learn what is reflection, okay? So reflection requires the art of pausing and slowing down, like really slowing down. Hum log apna koi bhi experience ko har badi mein nahi dek sakte. We can't. The more we try to rush through conclusion and rush through an answer, we actually miss everything, isn't it? We do that, right? So, whenever we feel the pain and anger, 
डोंट ट्रबल योर सेल्फ इन दोज मोमेंट्स डोंट आफ्टर सम टाइम कम बैक वेन यू वेन यू फील ओके यू रिफ्लेक्ट एट दैट टाइम बट वेन यू आर ऑलरेडी ट्रिगर्ड विद सो मच पेन एंड एंगर दैट इज नॉट द मोमेंट ऑफ रेजोल्यूशन दैट इज नॉट नॉट हाउ वी स्टार्ट ओके we need to simply be kind to ourselves during those moments and we don't have to wait for another time when we feel pain and anger again there is a lot of lead time in between right us us la us lead time mein se we have to take out some time for reflection and taking the lesson so that next time i might react differently might it's a practice okay like i have been practicing since 3 years only 3 years but the effects are tremendous like i would love to give myself in this practice rather than living maybe the next 30 40 years like the old way right if all of us are here we we don't know how much we live say all of us live till 90 all of us okay so there are still what good 40 to 50 years left so for the next 40 to 50 years do you want to live the same way or are you ready to take small steps to reflect change and maybe in few years maybe in one year in two year you might just change completely completely it it's possible happened with me and so many people i know so the art of slowing down is actually the art of fastening but that is a consequence of slowing down right when we rush through things the consequence is everything becomes slow in the external world jo chahiye wo nahi mil raha jitna harbadi karte hai we don't get it but if we slow down and if we know how to slow down things around us actually start moving fast okay so that is something which is a consequence that is not something that you run after what you need to learn is how to slow down we don't know how to slow down all we know is how to do everything very fast okay so listening to self without judgment and assumptions what does this mean we are always equipped to listen to others right when others are talking we listen and when we are talking we want someone else to listen we want someone else to hold that space where they can truly understand where we come from right but then this person is coming from his own space he or she might not understand what i'm trying to convey so i need to listen to myself first and i have to identify my feelings first before even communicating it with someone else if i am unable to do that i can seek guidance from so many coaches therapists so many people who are out there okay so many books find your way so many movies actually so find your way to connect to yourself and listen to yourself khud ko nahi sun sakte to hum log kisi ko bhi nahi sun sakte and the same happens with the other so we all we have is ourselves and we can listen to our experiences from a pause state and from a state of no judgment no assumption just as is and it comes with practice so just listen identifying words with charge we will do this so you'll understand locating the charge in the body some of you did that like you know someone of you said that i have anger in my head some of you said a uh, pain in chest and stomach and we'll do this for others moving through the emotion and this all of this actually can make space for new possibilities and new experiences there is almost no other way because if we are not ready to handle the existing landscape of emotions we are not ready to feel anything else even if we might think that everybody outside is responsible but actually it's our own subconscious that is guiding this whole thing okay and we have to simply look at it you don't have to do anything believe me we have to just learn how to look at our life and that can change everything 
totally okay so first we'll go to reflection and then we'll go to the next part i'll share another one. just give me a second i need to share screen <laughs> Why is it not opening? One second. Yeah. Right. Can you see this? All of you? Okay. So we are slowing down. Okay, all of you. Can you all of you come on video for like five minutes? because if i see your yes or no i'll it will be very easy aparna daksha possible hey thanks daksha hi thank you so first step so first step is to identify the words don't read the sentence lean back reshu lean back okay lean back and we all heard the story we all did we felt something from the story and now we need to understand we need to just look at the words that are really that you think have charge okay and i'm going to do this with you so i feel sick okay just look at words don't look at the sentence now okay i feel sick okay i'm underlining i don't understand their language of love just just birds i view okay and if you find any word that feels has a lot of charge type it down in the chat box i will see it it comes again and again and again okay do you see the charge here when we say charge simply it means uh, the weight of the words that we live through in the mind okay hum log jo bhi sochte whatever we think whatever we live inside of us even if we don't share it with anyone okay even if we don't share it with a single person it consumes my energy it consumes my space my wellness and then i'm not left with anything to do with my life if all of my energy is occupied in these thoughts this letter you know i was preparing for this class this letter took me uh eight pages when i wrote it with my pen it took me eight pages so eight pages will have so many words and so much energy so much energy that tina is dealing with and she doesn't know how to come out of it how to even share with family nobody gets it in her family she tried to talk to people in her family but they have their own backgrounds and they cannot understand what she's going through right so putting the blame on them again and again stopped helping her after a certain point of time okay so acute helplessness sadness feeling guilty i am i the only one responsible wait okay granted ya yeah. where is granted reshu so it's towards the end towards the end okay Okay, I'll see. It's all for granted, and it takes the soul out of me. There's that word. Yeah, yeah. Can't find it. Okay, I'll just come one by one. Feeling guilty, kept sitting, never. Okay, so this is one thing which you must know. Never, forever, ever. ये सारे words 
okay these are these are actually eternity postulates these words are called there's a name for it eternity postulates so the more we stick to these words the more intense will be our experience okay so we have to understand the intelligence of words and the energy they carry this is tina's own experience she did not share this with her husband or her mother in law she shared this with herself and that also could happen after a lot of discomfort okay so this is something which is only hers right she is going through this she is living these stories in her head and and she is believing in every word of it right it is her true experience at that time so the idea is to understand what are the words that matter so much to me okay what are the words that matter to me okay tina's words might not be very very uh, you know relatable to you but her emotions are okay the idea is to find your words and your portal into this channel of emotions that we keep on living so simple step here simple step write your experience and find the words like i am finding right now that is the first step and when you find the words you don't get into the story at that time not at all as if this is not you for example when i'm doing this uh, word wala activity i don't even i'm th- i'm not even thinking of her story i am simply looking at the words that catches my attention that are very strong okay so that's what i'm doing here okay so i'm not getting in like zooming in too much i am just noting some of the words see but i hate it i hate it i hate it there's so much charge in hate theek hai see this one okay i'm underlining this all i hate him for lying to me he doesn't love me he can never take care of me he can never see the beauty inside of me okay so as i worked with tina she told me she doesn't actually feel like this for her husband she doesn't feel like this her feeling is actually very different so they they were into a love marriage and they really shared everything from like with each other and this is just something that happens to her when she is triggered when she is looking at this experience where he is sitting she is not getting his help she ends up believing that she hates him she doesn't he doesn't love her he can never take care of her again never never when we put such words in our thinking and it is subconscious we are not doing it apne aap it's happening we are only observers okay people we are only observers don't think of yourself as controllers अगर कंट्रोल होता तो अभी तक लाइफ बदल जाता कंट्रोल नहीं है कंट्रोल बिल्कुल नहीं है ऑल वी कैन डू इज स्टार्ट ऑब्जर्विंग विदाउट कंट्रोलिंग ओके स्टार्ट ऑब्जर्विंग विदाउट कंट्रोलिंग ओके ही कैन नेवर सी द ब्यूटी इन साइड ऑफ मी सो दीज आर एक्चुअली कंक्लूजन कैन यू सी he can never see the beauty he can never take care of me he doesn't love me and i hate him for lying to me okay now these are the things that she simply ends up believing because of her difficult experience okay now for someone this can look like uh, you know i hate myself for not standing up i think uh, i was too uh, casual when i entered i did not take care of myself or uh, you know i always do this to me i always go for things that will not help me or value me thinking can be to each its own okay but look at the charge that you bring in your thinking okay that is number one rule of reflection otherwise you are not reflecting guys you are not reflecting you are simply reliving so when we keep on reliving the same thing how will it help it will simply deepen 
you know sometimes you'll feel that the main event the day when you felt bad is not even the worst day anymore when you keep reliving reliving 6 mahine baad you start feeling even worse it's not like the day when you felt it for the first time will be the worst you can keep reliving and the experience can go deeper and deeper for you so it is a very internal thing you know when we are triggered it's not about external situation is just like one minute right sometimes it's one second one second we might just look at someone and something can trigger us right so these are conclusions okay these are not thoughts uh, that can help her in any way so okay underline ki isko bhi we are slowly we are trying to navigate through her psyche and also her emotional landscape theek hai dheere dheere hum log ye koshish kar rahe right there's a word abuse here okay mental bana diya is also a lot of charge to the core daksha yes to the core silent suffering do you see the charge here silent suffering tedious process won't step up i feel so sick please help me and save me both has a lot of charge i will go nuts from this pain the choice of words are very specific okay for each one of us so abhi sirf words dekhte hain ek bar theek hai jo jo underline hua hai just words sick acute helplessness sadness feeling guilty only one responsible he will never take responsibility i hate it i hate it i hate it taking it for granted mere ko wo mila nahi abhi tak but it's okay i hate him for lying to me doesn't love me never take care of me never see the beauty abuse mental bana diya silent suffering tedious process won't step up i feel so sick please help me please save me nuts from this pain okay so what happened as we did this okay we can now see achanak say you know when we heard the letter for the first time all of us wasn't it a little overwhelming yeah but now as we have just taken the words now if i simply fare on another page i will get 10 words and doesn't that sum up her whole feeling it does so tina when tina came up with this letter and we did the whole the next session we did it with this letter and we went to the next process of identifying then also next process of finding her core wound it all came down to one sentence you know guys one sentence and she came up with that as we kept on working she could realize it and she told me one day that you know shruti i've got my i've got my line i know what happens with me and even though it's a little difficult journey but isn't it amazing in like within half an hour all of us from feeling the overwhelm we can feel the lightness already right it's not about time believe me it's about my attitude towards my own self towards my own self baki sab secondary hai agar mera attitude khud ko leke theek nahi hai if i am not feeling uh, you know i am not giving myself enough value for my life nobody else will do it for me nobody and we can keep living in this loop ye story 8 page ki jagah 80 page 800 page 8000 page ka bhi ban sakta hai you know and it can still overwhelm you because it is true for her 
so we are not invalidating tina's experience okay we are not doing that we are understanding very well that tina is going through a very difficult experience however she has come to the point where she is not willing to judge herself anymore bas itna hua hai that's it she is not willing to judge herself she is not willing to question her experience in right and wrong she has gone deeper than that right in the first session that she came to me we talked about her mother and we went into an inner child experience with her and somehow that was kind of a portal for her life that allowed her to open up to connect to herself sometimes you are not able to write okay and it's fine for the first year of my transformation journey i could not journal for one whole year and i used to feel bad but then i did not give up you cannot give up life is not about giving up right it's about just looking at things i can do things i cannot do and making the best from what i can do right so tina's experience by doing this activity has come down to a very small set of words that can now actually help us to understand what she's actually going through right she's actually going through the mix of complex emotions like guilt helplessness sadness uh anger discomfort feeling a uh, burden because of so much responsibility right am am i the only one and uh being engulfed in the eternity postulates like you know this will never happen this never happened so all of this is a mix of emotions that she is going through but then she is not aware of her emotions so all she believes is her thoughts okay our thoughts we have 60000 thoughts guys in a day we cannot believe all of them if you believe all of them isn't it like a very tiresome process how will we live we can't live so we have to understand what are the kind of thoughts that we would like to have and that is a consequence of the emotion that we are living thought is a consequence of the emotion you are living it's not the other way around okay tina was feeling this this mix of emotions and she could not find a way to express it so she ended up believing in this whole story and this is not real you know later on when she talked to her husband she told me that he did not even realize what she was going through he was stuck in his own uh, you know project and his own uh, errands that he was dealing with and he did not even notice what she is going through and he told her that tina you need to tell me properly otherwise how will i get it however when tina is telling him she is just ending up blaming him like you know you never love me you never care for me you do this you do that and then he is confused he doesn't know what she needs because she don't doesn't know what she needs you know she doesn't know what she is going through in her body and she needs to look at her emotions and today you know before i go to the next slide so it's almost been one year that she has been working you know on this and today when she comes okay she has also started learning now Uh, a lot of things so today when she comes to me and talks about her relationship she tells me she has found a way to express her true emotions which was always a struggle and and it was like she always used to think it's his issue now she tells me that you know i also have developed compassion for him and where he comes from i also ask him now what are you going through and maybe you can tell me right so she not only found her own energy but she also could now have space to talk about his experience and what he is going through and maybe if he needs help finding ways to help him right so that's what a relationship is right it's not about uh 
simply putting it or dumping it on the other, right? It's about first knowing me and then sharing this with the other. Even in an employee boss relationship, okay? Even in an employee boss relationship, this happens. The same thing, you know, when people get sick of their experiences with their bosses, but then they are unable to communicate. They end up taking whatever is being given. And then they feel that uh, lack all through the year. And sometimes people are unable to be as productive as they truly are. Just because they don't feel good enough in that environment right so all all relationships you know this is just an example like a portal but all relationships actually tells us what we want what we need okay so bring your focus to you to do anything in life we have to do this apne upar aana hi hai okay guys aana hi hai so i'm just sharing um, one second one second I'm using a bit of Hindi today, huh? Unusually. Yeah. I hope that's okay with all of you. Okay. So we learned about reflection. Okay. And so what does, why does this happen? Okay. Why does Tina have to go through so much difficulty to just pen down what she is going through. Right, guys? Itna mushkil kyu hota hai? We all want to understand what we are feeling and we want to live. But then why is it so tough? Why did she go through so much before being able to pen down, before being able to have that space of possibility? Like, you know, I said here, making space for new possibility and new experiences. And it's an internal space. It's not about external space. So we all know we have two minds, conscious and subconscious, okay? Conscious is 8 to 10, subconscious is 88 to 90. Mind, so when we say conscious is 8 to 10, subconscious is 90, what we are trying to say is that the subconscious is actually a collective of all the things that you have experienced, okay? Even if you don't remember consciously, even if you don't, no, exactly right now but your subconscious has everything stored everything okay and when we sleep actually the filter which segregates conscious and subconscious it opens up in the brain and it actually brings all the information in the front and it takes it back so it's a whole processing that goes on okay so even if we don't remember, all our experiences are relevant in life. Everything, okay? For example, the words that Tina used, like acute helplessness, sadness, abuse, tedious, um, never, such strong feelings, it comes from her subconscious experiences, okay? We all live our emotions based on how we have experienced life. Sonal, Reshu, Daksha, Aparna, all of you will have your own set of stories that help you in living your own pain and anger. Right? And pain and anger are simply a form of energy. Okay? We can look at them with a lot of love. It can be a love affair if we allow. Okay? And it's not just joy and ease that uh, we can feel all the time. That is again a consequence, right? So mind is not just this. Mind is the cellular memory field. Cellular memory is collective of personal, ancestral, and the whole collective like, you know, India, world, all of this, a cumulative, in a cumulative way forms the cellular memory field and forms the subconscious and forms the entire uh, personality or attitude in a way, okay? We can tap into the wisdom of these collective memories when we choose to look at it from a distance 
without trying to change anything about what we actually felt. This happens with a lot of us. We try to change our experiences, okay? To make it look good sometimes, to make it look okay sometimes. We sometimes we just learn how to pretend very good, you know? And it becomes like a second nature to the point that we forget our own feelings. Because anything can be a habit, right? If I pretend too much, I will be disconnected to what I actually feel, right? And hence, it's very important to first and foremost come back to what I actually feel. You know, for me, for example, this was a main bridge. When I started off my journey, I have lived through all of my childhood pretending that everything is fine. And I can have this smile on my face 24-7. So I'm very good at it. And hence, it was the main, uh, you know, the most difficult point for me to cross this barrier and look at my pain and look at my anger. So for me, reading and writing was not the first step. I had to go to someone and talk to someone who can guide me. So I actually worked on it. I worked on this, you know, pretension actually. And this pretension was actually my numbness, okay? We become numb to what we feel. And it's okay. It's absolutely okay. It's, it happens with almost all of us, right? And the idea, the, the good news is it's possible to actually release the numbness, come back to who we are and live a life that we want to live. So, jabibi, you feel overwhelmed, you feel indecisive, Bring yourself back to the possibility of what can happen if I choose to be me. Never ever discount the possibility of what can happen if you choose to be who you are. Okay. Even though the path looks difficult because it's unfamiliar. It's not so difficult. It's unfamiliar. Allow yourself to bring back the knowledge that I will choose to believe in the possibility and I will not choose to believe in the conclusion that everything's over and I can't do anything about it and everything will now be done by other people around me no I can take it okay so cellular I did not read this right cellular memory is a collective of personal ancestral and collective and our gene expression or attitude towards life is governed by this subconscious space so this is why we actually talk so much about subconscious, you know. It governs our attitude. It governs our life. It governs who we are being when we show up in the world. So if we want to show up in our relationships, in our life, as who we are, we have to come back to what are we actually feeling. In childhood, that was the wisdom of the child that it could pretend, you know. The fact that I could smile because I did not want to trouble my mother or father or siblings and I could pretend that I'm okay and it helped me and my family at that time, right? But now I don't have to live that anymore. It's done. Now I'm an adult. I can have new things in life. I don't have to go on living in my head by taking care of others, right? So allow yourself to come back to your experience with a newness, with a new attitude that, okay, this time I will tap into the possibility, okay? Being true to our own experiences is absolutely essential for this. Anybody can reflect when they can be true to what they are going through. Okay. And this doesn't happen naturally with a lot of us. We have forgotten, you know, some of us, we have forgotten how to come back to what we are feeling and what is my body telling me. For example, when we say that there is a pain in my stomach and there's a chest, uh, there's a pain in my chest, or I can feel this in my head. It's very real, guys. It's very real. No. Because the words, you know, I'll come back to the first slide. Look at this picture. Okay. Do you see this heart? And do you see this sword? Right. 
this is what we feel when the words are not so pleasant and the energy is not so pleasant and when there is this feeling in our heart it transmits something in the body it's a physical reaction okay there's something that will release in the body and if we connect to our bodies we'll know what is happening we'll know what is happening and we can then move through it but agar pata hi nahi hai ki kya chal raha hai to kaise karenge we have to first know what is happening and uh, hence this part becomes extremely important awareness of body and mind this is what we have to come to ye hone se you know once you do this you can actually reflect you can uh, take wisdom you can take whatever lesson you have to take if you are aware of what is happening in your body in your mind in one sentence i can tell you that okay so what do i mean by childhood ancestral and collective since i was mentioning that that our cell memory and uh, subconscious mind actually is a accumulation of all of this okay and this is proven in the field of science called epigenetics that just like dna we carry experiences from before okay if you are a human you must know we are all born with an emotional landscape and this landscape is a result of how our parents could live and embrace their own life further it is also a by product of our ancestral lineage and collective history this emotional landscape is the default that we are all used to just because we are used to something doesn't mean we can't change it right it's a matter of time when we realize that we already have what it takes to live our life fully trust me it's a matter of time kuch bahar nothing can be taken from outside to live your own life you have it within you and it's a matter of time when you realize that and when you actually start embodying that ye do alag alag cheez hai one is realizing knowing and then i try to embody it it's just that we have become used to the landscape we were born with or born in so we were born in a particular landscape and then from 0 to say 30 and 30 i'm going to be 31 so from 0 to 31 i am continuously developing on this emotional landscape and i don't know if something else exists out of this right because this is what i came with all we need to do is acknowledge the possibility of living life fully and on our own terms ye possibility acknowledge karna hota hai you know when i have to be very sure that yes i will do this i will make a choice in this direction of living like my life on my terms and living my life fully and that's my birth right living your own life is your birth right okay so you can very well claim it and it's not wrong it's not guilty it's not selfish and it's not anything that your thoughts might be giving you right now as a negative so that's your thought but that's not you okay so take baby steps and you can start shifting your reality right away okay we'll talk about it so this is what i broadly mean by uh, you know how all of this become part of our experience and we start looking at the world like that okay with that personality when we are able to reflect like this we automatically tap into the wisdom of our emotional experiences what do i mean by like this here okay what do i mean by like this here the only thing that i mean is what we did is we saw the story okay and we identified the charge we identified the words we identified her emotional landscape in a way we did right all of us we could understand broadly so after all of this we could also now understand so i have not mentioned it here but we worked with tina's childhood tina's ancestral mapping so there are methods which i use in my practice and we did that and we could 
when you know we could go back to the core pattern of her life the choice of words like again and again and again i hate it i hate it i hate it so when we went deeper into her story we realized how this was actually repeating from generations this feeling you know when she said that i feel that i and mom are like servants when and he is uh, sitting there it was not tina's feeling she could tell me later that you know this was something so foreign to my body and the anger will just show up and it will go after a minute and that is like a clock you know our genes they express that way they express that way some one maybe my grandmother maybe you know when my grandmother lived a very uh, isolated life and she could not talk to her husband and she maybe died like that okay now her gene will come to me and i also might find it very difficult to communicate to my husband even though i was talking to him for hours before marriage and it's a real problem now when i work with this wound of mine i again come back to my energy and i start talking again i start expressing myself again or i can choose to keep myself in the cycle of guilt blame and i can just be there my whole life and it's not right or wrong it's just another way of living okay someone who lives in guilt or blame is not wrong at all it is their journey at this time okay and it's up to you if you can choose right now for yourself that i will not live this cycle anymore and i will choose to end this and break this and when you do that you do that for generations you know piche aage everybody everybody you feel the rejoice in your body so there's this man oh his name is krishna thaan okay now he tells when you uh, start walking in your own energy it's like your ancestors and your descendants they rejoice through your body because for all of them who could not live fully when you live fully they are rejoicing wherever they are you know for them it's a treat and it's not what we think when they look at us when they look at us embracing life you know i also sometimes invite them when i'm walking in a garden and i'm feeling good i close my eyes and there's this activity that he tells and i invite them that you know walk with me i i'm feeling good right now all of you you can walk with me i'm living life fully and i'm choosing to live life fully i'm learning so that gives a lot of strength okay so these are little hacks for all of you when you feel you don't have strength always pray to your ancestors always they have magical ways of helping us out magical like you can actually come back and tell me stories if something like that happens yeah i'll come to your uh, messages okay guys after 5 minutes 5 to 10 minutes yeah right so that is one you all can try this activity out okay write your difficult experience detach from it underline the words that feel charged and then write those words in a separate set of paper and then just focus on that energy and see how you feel and own it it's your experience right so take responsibility in a way which is kind and not like a burden it's not a burden we trying to figure out who we are is our birth right i used to tell this a lot to myself actually you know when i used to feel down and you know as if no one knows what i am doing no one's helping me and i have to do it all by myself i used to tell me you know this is my birth right i will do it even if nobody gets it okay so find your own ways of helping yourself this is my way okay and i am sharing this with you you can use it if it helps you or you can find your own way make space make space little by you know step by step no end line make space right so i'll see if there's something else here 
right when we are able to reflect like this and by like this i just went through the process of reflecting you know and we also acknowledge so this is a systemic lens we are trying to develop so that we can not only look at something in a very personal way but in a very larger way and life is like that you know the more we try to constrict the meaning of life the more we also constrict ourselves so when we are able to reflect like this we automatically tap into the wisdom of our emotional experiences we automatically do that the wisdom will show up in your inner space all you have to do is understand this process of reflection and you will straight away tap into the wisdom it just comes you don't have to go after it it comes to you okay example and tina had a lot of wisdom moments but i'm sharing one here tina's wisdom tina started living the life of her mother as soon as she got married to tim this was her awareness okay she did not know this and even if she knew it at some level she did not know it in her body similarly someone may start living the life of their father as soon as they get married or get a job we are all repeating what was unseen and ignored so if we choose to see that you know if we choose to see what's happening and what was not seen earlier we actually relieve ourselves of repeating and reliving it okay our bodies remember our cells remember and our emotional landscape knows we were born with it so we cannot ignore it till the last day of life we won't be able to ignore how we feel okay so we can make a choice and look at it so it's for the best that we become aware of our bodies and we take conscious actions and decisions in our lives and our relationships actually it is life and when we start taking such decisions in life it automatically reflects in our relationships this way we create a chance to live our own authentic life we are all equipped to make choices for our own well being we don't have to wait for anybody to make a choice for us ye samajhna bahut zaruri hai you know guys that we are the only ones that have a chance to create our own life and we are all equipped as well to make such choices we don't have to wait for anybody to tell us or make a choice for us only children need that from their parents not adults right so we have to remind ourselves and make such choices that can help us and only we know what can help us okay this is just something that came to me so i wanted to share this stop glorifying your pain stop indulging in your suffering as the narratives of your memories will eat up all of your energy for you know what happened with tina she could not understand how much she has indulged into her own pain and suffering and all the stories that we could actually bring to one paper at the end was unaware from her uh, psyche she could not know what's happening until she worked on this okay and one year is a very short time right people if in one year everything was so nice for her and she feels motivated and she knows where to go next isn't that wonderful yeah so start making choices different from the previous ones when i say different from the previous ones from the ones that eat up all of your energy these thoughts they eat up all of my energy so i have to know what's happening with me learn how to invest in your wellness learn how to invest in your ease learn how to invest in rest in abundance which is true form of abundance okay look at the larger picture of life learn how to zoom out we can zoom in into the story of tina when we read the letter we zoomed in but then when we were underlining we zoomed out so we we need to know how to do that for our own selves zoom in and then we zoom out okay like you know we jab we, we look at a picture on the phone we zoom in we look at our face and we see how it is and then we zoom out and we look at the whole picture right 
so that's exactly what you need to do with your emotional experiences as well zoom in but then learn how to zoom out and if you are unable to zoom out find someone that can help you who can help you don't give up don't you have what it takes but you need to realize it you have it all in your body but you need to access it right body mein hai par access bhi to karna padega na we have to access you are unique and you are gifted but you need to believe it we have to learn how to believe in it and why are we not believing in the potential that we are born with you are perfect the way you are but you need to understand you have to understand how you are perfect in your own way okay and that's your job and that's your part actually job is a very poor choice of word and not getting a better word but that's your thing i would say that's your thing and when you do that magically people will start complimenting you you know that happens when we start embracing our own life people around us they get that energy from us you know they get that energy from us like when i'm taking this class now i am feeling different than what i used to feel 2 years ago 2 years ago i was not feeling this way and now when i feel this way i somewhere no i don't even you know consider what people are thinking about me i'm just considering what i can bring and what i can live right even when i was preparing the class it was more about how i was living it so you will find your own way you will find your own way so coming to this point okay and this is one slide which i've just developed to help you like you know uh, when i was talking about making a choice even if it is a baby step where was it yeah we are all equipped to make choices for our own well being we don't have to wait for anyone to make a choice for us right so i'll just give you a small template of how to make a choice okay very small template and can be very like you know it already maybe so who what why when and how theek hai so maybe you know i can decide that i need help or maybe i need to do something about my life these are the questions that actually uh, comes up who can i connect with what should i do why hum log cater kiye abhi right why is what we actually did in this whole class why we should do it in the first place so that we know now theek hai so who what why we did in the class when kab karna chahiye abhi shuru kar de ek mahine baad kare kya kare and then how how do we do it okay the biggest circle is how everything boils down to how we start creating all of these shoulds and should nots in the head and we don't realize how do we go ahead we take the wisdom we take the knowledge but then again we might feel stuck right so list these five words for yourself who what why when and how and just see what your body tells you just a second there's a light issue here one minute just hang on Hi, can you hear me, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. So we'll do the next part without light, maybe. Okay. <laughs> so I'll just share once again. Okay. Yeah. So it's who, what, why, when, and how. Okay. I can help you with each aspect of it. but you have to come up and ask me all of you okay you have to ask me you have to form your own question 
and you have to ask me and i can help you with all of this but write this and do the first part who would you like to work with what would you like to work with why we have catered the why but then again write for yourself in a very brief manner you know why do you want to do anything for yourself in the first place when do you want to do it and ye sara question ka answer you will not give it by your mind okay you simply breathe into your body let the body answer trust your instincts more than your thought processes when you do this process okay trust your instincts and all of you come back to me i have a group right whatsapp group all of you in the whatsapp group give me the answer of these questions that we can start with all of you since we have talked about starting off somewhere we can start with this simple identification even if i don't know all the answers i can know one or two maybe when when the answer of when is now maybe i want to start right now in any way that i can right and all of you write your answers and if you are not getting your answers write your questions and you get back on the whatsapp group i will keep it active for another week okay so please send in your answers okay and trust your body your body knows believe me your body knows and believe me because i am also a human that's it that's it all we need to do do is be human so human is the highest form of evolutionary being on this planet right now right all of you so i don't want to know what you all have done in your life what you have achieved or not achieved you are born as a human and that's it that allows us to tap into the greatest potential that we are everything is there in the body you know it is it is i never knew i will become a therapist so sonal knows this because she is in my coaching program so i was telling them that i never ever imagined that i will be a therapist no i did not i was a ca i was doing my finance job i did it for 8 to 9 years and from last 3 years i have been practicing learning learning from 4 years actually now and i didn't know i just didn't know so all of you believe that something can happen which you don't know right now you don't know allow yourself to believe in the magic that you can unfold for your life you yourself will and can okay and it's not something that i am it's not a theory it's something that has not just happened with me with all of the people that i have worked with everybody you know except one or two who did not want to continue their work because maybe they did not feel it's the right time but the people who worked with me long enough like you know few months or few sessions like whatever they came with they went back with a renewed sense renewed sense and it's just because of their own willingness to believe who they are <coughs> okay so this is okay so this is what i wanted to share one more thing is i'm coming up with a month long program my relationships my teacher where i would be mainly talking about our relationship with our emotions so i will be mainly doing this part in this workshop this part okay where we become aware of what's happening in the body and in the mind and i will be talking about all the emotions so the first class so there are eight sessions i would like to just show you the structure there are eight live sessions on wednesdays and thursdays one and a half hour each okay it is currently priced at an introductory offer of 36000 and you have a lot of emi options available 
and before even jumping to the price look at the possibility that you can have if you give yourself a space like this okay just look at the possibility and see how you feel with the possibility okay and one of my teachers in my initial days he used to guide me on how to decide how you know whether i should do something or not and he told me that you know every workshop every course everything that you do for yourself has an ability to pay for itself so once you start learning and unlocking your own wisdom you will find how you will also find sources of revenue that will help you paying off the things that you want to do in your life for example i wanted to buy a phone okay and i did not have money at that time and uh, it was like a 1 lakh rupee phone and uh, i was like i i need to have it it was one one and a half year ago i'm extending a little bit by 10 minutes if you are busy you can go you can come back to the recording okay so i wanted to buy that phone and i did not have money so i decided not to be in lack and i actually saw my emotions i moved through them i prayed i did all of the things that i just talked about i reflected on my story i did everything and in two weeks my mom and dad gifted me with that phone and it was just unbelievable they don't do that uske baad abhi tak aur koi gift nahi diya unhone theek hai so it's not like it's a regular thing but then this one time when i decided not to give up i decided i still need it and my current bank account will not decide what i want in my life that is the attitude that i'm talking about okay so in these eight sessions i will be deep diving into a lot of emotional experiences and today i could just talk about pain and anger however it's a major part of life but i will also deep dive into other emotions and uh, we will work through them during these sessions and when you go back you will go back with a renewed sense on how to reflect and how to move through it you will be in a much more i would say uh, awakened or enlightened state in your body because you will find that connection and that difference that uh, you want to bring okay and these will be really in depth and experiential so if you choose to be a part of it just know that uh, be present and be there for yourself this is something that if you choose for yourself just know that you have to be really willing to change something in your life that's not adding up to who you are that willingness will bring wonders and nothing else okay everything else is simply you know i have culminated this whole process and i have created this space but then you know the 10 people so the only 10 seats are here so the 10 people who show up will simply be the people who want a space like this for themselves where they want to grow into their own versions and also look at their emotions and relationships from an adult lens not from that child lens where i keep on thinking that the other has to do something for me you know that doesn't help it's like a vicious cycle of expectation and disappointment you know it's like a goal goal circle of expectation and and it's not like we are we are not to blame you know it's it's just some just think i am tell, i i don't know what you are living personally in your lives right all of you but then whatever i am saying i somewhere know it resonates to you because as human beings we are all dealing with it in our own ways hai na so just know if you want a space like this for yourself and you want to allow yourself to grow it is more about the space it is not about anything else it is more about the space if i trust this space if i trust the uh, you know things that are told in this space money is something that will show up for itself so with that trust decide on the possibility and not on the cost because the cost is actually an investment okay and it was a big part of my learning journey so i felt that i should tell this to you because as a beginner it's very difficult to decide what should i do for myself okay 
So this is one offering that I bring in the month of May. It starts 4th of May. Okay. And uh, I can also just show you this. So this is the link. Okay. I'll share it in the chat box. This is the link where you all can register. And if you are a participant from outside India, please contact me through these options and I will share the PayPal details with you if you are someone who is not in India. And if you are someone who is from India, you can register here and you will find all the, you know, uh, EMI options when you go to the next page. Okay, so you can find that as well. So I'm stopping the share. I'm coming to your questions if you have any questions. Yeah, so the first question is by Kiran. What if we don't know who we are? I've heard this often, be who you are. I struggled to know who I am. So Kiran, can you come off mic? Could you find the answer in the whole class? Or should I answer this? Kiran, are you there? Yes, she can help. <laughs> One second. Yeah. Sorry, uh, I missed the question. What is that? So you, you're asking, what if we don't know who we are? I've heard this often, be who you are. I struggle to know who I am. Yeah. So do, could you find your answer by the whole class, in the whole class, or should I tell you? Uh, I, I got a glimpse of it. Yes, as you said, we have to make one second. As you said, like, you know, um, I missed some in past because, you know, I had to attend to some things, you know, so it's morning for me here. <laughs> so. Okay. So, you know, Kiran, it's just that when we say be who you are, okay, who I am is a consequence of knowing my own emotional landscape first. Okay. So I talked a lot about emotional landscape. I talked a lot about we are all born with one and how it is influenced by the collective, by the ancestral experiences, by our own soul journeys. A lot of factors are there. But then we are born with a landscape of emotions. And if we don't look at it and we don't learn how to move through it, we don't realize who we are. Okay. So... Who we are is a consequence of knowing my emotional landscape in the truest manner possible. I cannot, uh, you know, change my experience when I'm looking at my emotions. I cannot judge my experience. If I do that, and it happens in a very subtle manner, you know, it's not like you decide and you do it. It just happens in the head. It's very fast. So the idea is to learn how to, so, you know, when I was talking about reflection, I said the art of slowing down. So we need to learn that. We need to learn how to slow down these extremely fast reactions, how to slow down and understand what my landscape is all about. For example, in someone's emotional landscape, there can be 80% anger and 20% pain. Okay. So... <laughs> Maybe, maybe I can. So the thing is, if it is 80 and 20, then maybe I need to also see what are the other elements, 2%, 5%, is there, what is the percentage of guilt? What is the percentage of shame? What is the percentage of sadness? So I have to find my own words first. I have to understand my landscape. That will give me a lot of space to navigate and understand what's happening in my life. And slowly, when we practice, 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 we become who we are. So it's a consequence. It's not something, it's not like a book that you will read and you'll know who you are. No. It's something that is a realization that happens in itself. And, you know, you, you probably would want to pick up your phone and tell someone when you feel that, you know, that I'm finally living who, whoever I am. And I don't care. I don't even know what it means. Sometimes we do that, you know. So be open to know your psyche in terms of your landscape. 
not just thoughts my emotional landscape so all of you please i hope you've got this word emotional landscape very important what is your landscape what what is the landscape what what do you mostly deal with and not in terms of the eight page story in terms of that one page uh, you know uh, what do we say it one page summary of of what i'm going through and the more we bring it into smaller words the more we understand okay makes sense yeah okay what if we pretend only to maintain peace and family and to avoid any unnecessary argument or conflict that's what i was talking about that's what we end up doing right so much we end up maintaining peace and we disrupt our inner peace right and we avoid unnecessary argument or conflict in the outer world but it all happens in the inner world so when it happens in the inner world it will come out in the outer world in some way or the other either i will catch up a disease i will fall or someone else might go through something that will uh, bother me for the it's just you know universe will start showing up all my inner conflicts in the outer world somehow somehow and it is illogical ratio it is illogical so don't put logic emotions are not governed by logic okay so when we learn how to understand emotions we have to drop logic in my first class on 4th may i will only talk about emotional landscape and i will only talk about how to look at it because we are all prone to so much logic we don't know how to look at it okay so uh, the thing is what if we pretend like you're saying the thing is we do pretend so look at it look at it like something that happens not something which is wrong okay reshu it's not wrong or right it's something that happens so you observe it and you see okay i do like you know i experience this where i maintain peace outside and i keep the inner struggle for myself inside and then i don't even look at it maybe i forget it ignore it and then it is stored in my body you know the pain in your chest it is a stored emotion but it comes up only when you allow it to come up it's not like you will keep feeling it every time all day it comes up when you allow it to come up so we need to make that choice that if i don't want to pretend what can i do simply put what can i do okay make sense yeah for the longest time i felt acute shoulder pain only when i released all the responsibilities which weren't even mine did i release the pain as well thank you for sharing this it happens like that you know when we release all the things that doesn't belong to us our pain points also release automatically this seems so magical thank you how do we know if we were we are making the right choices for our children you don't know <laughs> so daksha you don't know you have to trust your instincts and you have to know that i am doing my best and my children may or may not like it and when they grow up i trust universe to also equip them with all the faculties that i have been equipped with so they will be able to make their own choices even if something even if you do something which doesn't make them feel good for now they will be equipped to handle it later on maybe so you don't beat yourself for that you simply reflect and if you you know if if there's something in particular that you want to change or you are concerned about you can find a way for that okay but don't uh, think like this that how do i make all the choices that are right for my children because we don't know we can only trust our instincts and then see what happens sometimes they will tell us that you know it was awesome what what you told me was awesome and sometimes they might just get back at you like you know what have you done to my life in any case you need to know from which space are you dealing with your children 
okay if you deal from a space of guilt you will end up feeling more guilty and if you deal from a space of trust you will know they will find their way just like you did okay so they are simply reflecting what you feel internally so your inner space is again something that will help you in your relationship with your child the more you see it they will also understand make sense daksha yes yes this helps thank you no problem okay aparna had to take her leave no problem very sure that's okay great thank you for being there for like almost 20 minutes extra thank you so much and uh, i hope to see maybe all of you or some of you in the program so that we can uncover the magic of emotions let's see okay if you have any questions anything feel free to dm learn to ask ask i will just ask anything people will reply they will not reply you keep asking okay and thank you that's all from my end thank you so much thank you so much thank you thank you thank you bye bye bye